My friends, in this lecture, what I'll try to basically do is understand the whole concept of bending stresses. Now, from the previous lecture, we take the concept of pure bending forward to this lecture. For example, I defined a region in the previous lecture called CD, wherein there is no shear force or zero shear force and constant value of bending moment. Now, we'll try to extract an element out of that region CD and zoom it here and draw it here. For example, I have this element which is subjected to pure bending, that is constant bending moment, M and M. And I have two planes cutting this element, MN and this is suppose PQ. And these two planes are at a distance of DX from each other. Now, due to this pure bending, this whole element will bend like this. So essentially, I have this element subjected to moment M and the element will bend like this. Now, we will see here from here that the top fibers will be in compression. And the bottom fibers will be in tension. That is the top fibers will get shortened whereas the bottom fibers will get elongated. Now in between the top fibers and the bottom fibers, there will be a layer at which there won't be any change in dimension. And this layer is called my neutral layer. So there is a layer wherein there is no change in dimension. And this layer is called the neutral layer. Now I have some assumptions to make. First, PO bending. This essentially means that the body is subjected to PO bending and the cross sections of the beam before and after bending are perpendicular to the longitudinal fibers. For example, I have a beam like this, suppose, and this is before bending and I have this cross section. So the cross section, as is obvious, is perpendicular to the longitudinal fibers. Now the beam is, will suppose bends like this, and suppose this is my cross section. This cross section is also perpendicular to the longitudinal fibers. So essentially, the concept of pure bending gives rise to this. Number two, homogeneous. The material is homogeneous, and as such, we can apply Hooke's law. Number three, prismatic. That is, the, the cross sections are all identical. Now, taking these three assumptions, now, we, have no, we know these three assumptions. Now, the next concept, this MN, if I draw it here, it will be like this. And this PQ, that is the plane before bending, I'm also drawing it like this. And this MN and PQ are at a distance of DX, suppose. Now this PQ, this layer or this section or this plane PQ will have some kind of a change due to bending. And essentially it will be like this. So this is suppose P dash Q dash. Right. And this P dash Q dash meets MN at suppose O. And this angle is suppose is equal to D theta. And suppose that this is the radius of curvature. Now the basic aim of ours will be to find stress at a point which is at a distance y from the neutral axis. So if this is y, we are going to find stress at suppose this point C. Right. So stress at a point from at a distance y from the neutral axis, we got to find this out. And how can we find this out? Now strain, as we know, at y is, sub, is equal to nothing but, for example, if this is, so I got to zoom it, zoom this region. For example, this is suppose, this is suppose my neutral axis, right. And I have this plane, which is nothing but is equal to mn. And this is suppose is equal to y, right. Now, this is PQ, the plane before bending. 
and this is at a distance of dx from n. Now after bending it has changed to like it has changed to p dash q dash and this angle is nothing but is equal to d theta. So essentially this is my plane this is a line suppose cd so this is cd and I zoom it here and the cd has increased its length to cd dash due to bending right so strain at y is nothing but is equal to change in dimension original by dimension original right so what is the change in dimension original cd dash minus cd that is dd dash so dd dash is the change in original dimension by cd will give me the strain at a distance y from the neutral axis so dd dash is nothing but is equal to if this is y this is d theta so dd dash is equal to y d theta and cd is equal to dx now we know from here that r into d theta will give us this or r d theta is equal to dx so essentially dx by d theta can be replaced by r so y by r is equal to f sub y so strain at a distance y from neutral axis is directly proportional to the distance from neutral axis now we got to find the stress at a point defined by a distance y from the neutral axis right so stress at point c suppose sigma y is nothing but equal sorry if you bring this relation here f sub y is equal to nothing but y by r so f sub y is nothing but is equal to sigma y by e which is equal to y by r and sigma y is essentially equal to e y by r so stress at point which is y distance from neutral axis is directly proportional to the distance from neutral axis so this is what this is the relation we wanted to derive now this is my neutral axis wherein due to pure bending application there is no change in there is no change in its dimension so if you have to find the stress at a point c which is at a y distance away from the neutral axis it's given by sigma y e y by r now if it's at the bottom of the neutral axis y it's positive and sigma y is positive and hence it will be some kind of a tensile stress now if y is negative sigma y is also negative and it will be some kind of a compressive stress this is all for this lecture i have introduced the concept of bending stress now at last i will write to tell something and that is at therefore at every cross section the, suppose this is my cross section of a beam and there is this axis right and at the at the bottom of this axis there will be some kind of compressive forces or sorry some kind of uh, tensile forces developed and at the top there will be some kind of compressive forces and the resultant of these two forces essentially gives us the couple which produces the bending moment and if this is the internal force that is produced by the external loads right this produces a couple that will give us the necessary bending moment so essentially the bending this bending stresses produce the bending moment so that is all for this lecture thanks a lot